For centuries, humans have been growing alongside our botanical brethren. Our histories have mixed and mingled to bring us modern medical marvels, faded folklore, and everything in between. Of course, in order to understand the plant, we have to start with its roots. I'm M. Governor Gaddis, and this is Rooted. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Rooted. This week, we're digging into a plant most of us are familiar with and probably interact with regularly without even knowing it, willow. There are many varieties of trees that are technically referred to as willows, so for this episode, we're just going to be talking about the entire genus Salix, which includes all of them. Willows are part of the Salaceae family, which includes other trees like poplars, aspen, and cottonwoods. They prefer to grow in cold to temperate regions with moist soil and plenty of shade. Most are absolute water hogs, but there are some that do grow well in arid climates. They're characterized as having long oval leaves with serrated edges, catkin flowers, which means the flowers are long and skinny, and lighter, craggly bark that's known for leaking lots of watery sap. As far as trees go, they tend to be on the shorter side, which is no surprise given that they like the shade, and are fairly short-lived, sticking around for only about 30 to 50 years. What they don't have in lifespan, though, they more than make up for in history. Don your peplos and ready your chariots, because we're going all the way back to ancient Greece. In Greek mythology, willows are associated with the goddess of ghosts and witches, the original woman supporting women, and just all-around badass, Hecate. Can you tell she's one of my favorites? Before we dive into why she's associated with Willow, I just want to give you a little bit more background about her. When she wasn't busy helping newly passed on souls find their place, she was supporting her pals by making their husbands swallow rocks, sticking up for weasels, and making sure women didn't settle when the bar was literally in hell. Let's start with the whole man-swallowing-stone bit, shall we? Hecate played a big part in helping Rey trick her husband Kronos into swallowing a large stone instead of her newborn son, Zeus. See, Kronos had this whole thing where he swallowed all of his children to prevent them from overpowering him because he saw in a prophecy that one of them would, which is kind of messed up, but I mean, I guess he was right about that? The story goes that after Rey had given birth to Zeus, she and Hecate pulled off a bit of a switcheroo and swaddled a large stone instead of the baby. Then, they passed the swaddled rock to Dad, who shoved the whole thing down his gullet while Rey ran away with the baby. Zeus would later go on to be an absolute shit who honestly just caused way more problems for pretty much everyone. For instance, when Zeus got Alchemini pregnant, Hera, his jealous wife, demanded two of her friends go hold her womb shut to prevent the birth of Hercules. When they got to Earth, the friends went to visit the expectant mother, whose midwife was already three steps ahead of them. She told them that Alchemini had already given birth, and that the two ladies should just kind of go home. So they did. Then, Alchemini delivered Hercules, and Hera pitched a massive fit turning her friends into weasels. Hecate thought that was honestly a little fucked up, so she made weasels into one of her sacred attendants. In another version of this same story, the woman who was turned into a weasel was actually a witch who was so sexually deviant that the gods felt they had no other appropriate solution. And Hecate, being the goddess of witches, decided that women should get to like sex just as much as anyone else without being turned into weasels, and thus decided to at least make being a weasel an honorable thing. Hecate doesn't just get involved in matters of childbirth, though. She also played a huge part in helping Persephone escape literal hell, even if for only part of the year. As the goddess trusted to guide souls on their path through life into death, 
Hikati has a very clear view of the road into the underworld and can hear most of what goes on down there, something Persephone's mom didn't have going for her while she was frantically searching for her daughter. Hikati could hear someone calling out for help and finally put two and two together when she heard everyone was looking for Persephone, who had randomly visited Hell the other day with her creepy uncle Hades. She went to Helios, the god of the sun, who could see everything, and he confirmed what Hecate had suspected. They immediately went back to the underworld, found Persephone, and got to work on an agreement to at least free her from hell for most of the year. But back to why she's tied to Willow. Partially, it's because she's described as having a very willowy figure. Tall, wispy, and thin. She also carries two candles and is followed by a black dog, which just makes her effortlessly cool and creepy. But it's not just that. She's also very closely tied in with water and the moon, which makes sense given the whole witch thing, but also since she's technically the goddess who presides over all three stages of life, maiden, mother, and crone, she is closely associated with crossroads, especially at waterways. Willows are known to be the most common tree spotted at riverbanks and waterfronts, so it makes sense that they would eventually get linked back together. But it doesn't stop there. Willows are known for their healing properties, which we'll get to, and witches in that time were typically women who also happened to be healers, so this tree was important to followers of Hakati in their practice and in their worship. But it wasn't just the Greeks who associated willows and witchcraft. In Celtic folklore, willows are part of the native druid story of creation, with the tale telling of two scarlet eggs, the sun and the earth, being tucked away inside a willow tree for safekeeping until they hatched. As a fun fact, this is actually where the tradition of hiding eggs at Easter comes from, as this was something done to celebrate Beltane, which just so happened to perfectly align with Easter as Christianity made its way to Ireland. Crazy how that worked. But this isn't the only tradition that Willow brought us. It's also where the tradition of knocking on wood comes from. See, Willow was said to bring good luck, flexibility, and prosperity due to its uncanny ability to lay down roots pretty much anywhere. Not even an exaggeration, willows have been known to just casually float downstream until they find somewhere they like, and then they'll just lay down fresh new roots like nothing even happened. It's because of this happy-go-lucky attitude and the healing properties of willow that people started feeling like it had to be magic, and clearly would then do helpful things for us if we could only just ask. So people began knocking on the wood of willows, which was used to make pretty much everything at that time, in hopes of waking it up to hear their wishes or offer its protection. It was also said that its leaves billowing in the wind was actually the whispering of dwarves, which really just adds a touch of whimsy to your walk through the woods. As a symbol of protection, willow was thought to keep evil at bay, and was used to fend off anything from fairies to wayward souls. On the wayward souls front, willow branches were often used as funeral torches, as it was believed the dead and living could both see them, helping the newly deceased to find their way to the afterlife while still being able to be a source of comfort to the mourners grieving. To keep fairies away, folks would typically attach flowers or boughs of the tree to things they didn't want fairies to steal, with most of the sources I found specifically calling out butter churns, as apparently fairies were notorious for getting their grubby little bodies all up in people's butter. In many cultures, people believed that willows are fairies, or at the very least that they have a soul. This is why in some traditions it's seen as bad luck to chop down or burn a willow, as doing so kills the soul inside. This was even true in England, with folks refusing to use or bring willow into their houses unless it was harvested on Palm Sunday, 
when apparently the spirits were just like totally cool with being burned to death. Needless to say, lots of cultures have lots of thoughts on these trees, both good and bad. But one thing they all agreed on is that they had a place in society, and plenty of uses. As you might have guessed, willows have lots of uses and ties specifically to witchcraft. Willow is an extremely popular choice for tools like wands due to its storied past and its association with being able to bend and direct energy. It's also commonly used for love spells and shadow work due to its ties to feminine energy and luck, as well as Akati and her knowledge of the dark and light in all humans. But it's not just helpful for spiritual healing. It's been commonly used in medicine for centuries. In folk medicine, many cultures would either chew on the willow bark or make it into a tea to help with pain and inflammation. It was also used to relieve pain associated with menstruation, labor, headaches, and even to relieve fever. If it's starting to sound kind of like aspirin, well, that's because it is aspirin. The aspirin we use today is made of the active ingredient acetyl salicylic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid is derived from the chemical salicylin, which comes from willow trees bark and sap. It works by inhibiting the creation of prostaglandins and thromboxines, which work to stimulate inflammatory responses and promote clotting. By preventing these two from doing their thing, pain is decreased due to the lack of inflammation. Salicylin also has antibacterial and hydrating properties, which is why it's long been touted as an amazing additive to skincare, helping to clear skin, acne, abrasions, and just overall helping to keep your skin nourished and clean. While taking aspirin, and therefore using willow supplements, is generally regarded as safe, you should be especially careful if you're already taking blood thinners, as willow is known to inhibit clotting and could result in an increased risk of bleeding. As always, if you're interested in incorporating willow into your own medicinal care, you should consult with your primary care physician. While willow was, and still is, all the rage in medicine, it's not the only thing folks were using it for. As I mentioned earlier, willow was a top choice for things like building and weaving due to its straight branches and strong but pliable wood, and it was just so commonly found that it was readily available. When it wasn't being used to build houses, it was also being used to make things like harps, hand tools, and even to send messages. For starters there, we have to dive into my favorite secret language, fluorography. Willow could be used to show your inner angsty teen by pinning it to your collar after an especially bad time courting or being rejected. Kind of like the modern day equivalent of blasting pop punk in your room and slamming the door. Alternatively, it could also be used to break up with someone in a super petty way by simply sending a massive bouquet of the stuff to their house. Aside from relationship ending, willows were also said to be used by families in their landscaping to signify that they had gone through a tough time, especially weeping willows in the front yard. Apparently, no one wanted to buy an English manor with a weeping willow in the front yard because it was absolutely cursed, haunted, or a delightful blend of the two. Today, weeping willows are still iconically used in creepy or sad films, but willow is also used to make cricket bats due to its light weight and strength, and of course, it continues to be used in aspirin and in skincare. Willows have always played an important role in the societies and cultures they're native to, and thanks to modern medicine, that's not changing anytime soon. I hope next time you see a willow while you're on a walk, you take a second to really soak in all of the wild things it's been used for, and all the ways it still helps us today, even if it's kind of a weed most places. And of course, if you feel so moved, give it a little kiss on the head. Maybe even take a piece of the bark if you're feeling saucy or in pain. And feel free to send your best willow sightings my way. That's all I've got for this week. 
but I'll be back soon with more tall tales and true facts about the plants we all know and love. If you liked the show, please consider subscribing and leaving us a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you listen. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at rooted.pod. We're on YouTube at rooted.podcast, and check out our website, rootedpod.com, for transcripts, updates, and so much more. Thanks for being here, and until next time, be kind to yourselves, be kind to the earth, and just like a plant, drink your water. <laughs>